Okay, now we're going to start talking about the uh, history of psychology. Um, psychology as a field by itself is relatively new. However, the, uh, the discussions about the human mind and behavior have been going on for a long, long time. Uh, think about the roots in uh, you know, that Western philosophy. Think about the Greek philosopher, Aristotle, and so on. Uh, they may not have used the word psychology, but they certainly were interested in how the mind works. And uh, so there is really an important root in the field of psychology. Uh, the study of biology, the study of physiology, the study of medicine. This has an important, or also important root in the study of psychology. Or, you know, we think about the mind, we think about behavior, it's very much related to how the body works and physiology. So, those two fields are very intimately linked. One of, now, the father, who's been called, Wilhelm Wundt has been called the father of psychology. What he, his, uh, one of his important contributions was he established the first psychology laboratory which meant that he really took the field of psychology and treated it as a science. Studying, you know, making observations, taking measurements, being systematic. And this is uh, an important characteristic of the field of psychology that Wilhelm Wundt really, uh, you know, really, I think, it, it really launched this, uh, this, this idea. Uh, one of his uh, students was uh, Edward Titchener, and uh, both uh, Wolf and Titchener uh, looked had used uh, structuralism was their uh, was their theoretical uh, background. Uh, what that meant was that they they looked at the mind and how the mind worked and how we per, we we perceive the world around us. They looked at perception, but they looked at it in terms of like breaking it down into bits. So for example, breaking down w what you are sensing into various components. So like, let's just say you are observing an apple. They would ask you, uh, you know, tell me what you are sensing right now. Okay, I'm sensing the roundness of it, the color of it, red, the shininess of it. So in other words, breaking down the elements of your consciousness into uh, those, those, those components. And that's essentially what they're trying to do. Uh, so that's essentially what structuralism is about, is that it's in breaking down our consciousness into those individual components. And the way to do that was through a process they called introspection. They had subjects report Deta in detail, what they were feeling, what they were seeing, what they were observing, everything about what their sensory experiences at the moment. Uh, so introspection was one of their, uh, it was essentially uh, what they were looking to have to do. An interesting uh, study that Vaughn did was he would ask people to observe a uh, metronome, which is kind of like a, you know, uh, like a device that, uh, a lever, you know, like a, a tick-tock, tick-tock, tick-tock past a certain point. And they would ask the subjects to observe, to state when they see the, uh, the dial hit a certain point. When it reaches a certain point, it's how when they see it. And what he discovered you know, was that there was a time lag between when the metronome hits a certain point and when the subject uh, stated that they observed it. And that indicates, that time lag indicates the mental process going on of being able to uh, see it and then be able to state it. So, again, that was something that was uh, a way in which he was trying to measure mental processes. So, very interesting work. And uh, Titchener, uh, who was a student, established the first psychology laboratory in the United States. A 
Another important figure in the history of psychology is William James. Now, William James took a very different point of view from the structuralist. Uh, his uh, theoretical background he called, he called, he called functionalism. The idea being uh, looking at, instead of looking at how the mind is put together, how the consciousness is structured, rather look at what consciousness does, what consciousness, the purpose of consciousness is. The purpose of it is to help us survive, to help us uh, understand the outside world. So, for example, let's go back to the apple again. Apple example. Structuralists might be interested in how the person is perceiving it as round, as shiny, as red. Uh, the functionalists are interested in looking at the apple as something to eat and realizing, understanding the purpose of what it is you are perceiving. Uh, another uh, aspect of consciousness that William James is interested in is what he called stream of consciousness. You know, kind of uh, moving backwards and forwards, not just staying in one place. You know, you're thinking about one thing and then immediately think about something else. Connecting with, some, with uh, something you've done previously, looking into the future, that kind of thing. So your consciousness varies from moment to moment. And uh, it's not just something that you can just take a snapshot of and just look at like a piece of, like a picture that you can put together like a jigsaw puzzle, seeing like what structuralists might be doing. The stream of consciousness, consciousness is dynamic it's, it's, and, and it's uh, not just one like stable picture. And again, that's, that's the idea there. Okay. So why is human thought adaptive? That's an important question that William James, as well as the evolutionary psychologists that follow him, are asking. How does human thought help us survive? How does it help us cope with the environment around us? So recognizing an apple as something to eat is certainly important for uh, it's certainly important for survival, more so than recognizing that it is round. And uh, William James and his functionalism kind of leads us directly into uh, evolutionary theory, Charles Darwin. When he wrote the origin of, on the origin of species, that was very obvious, very influential book. And it led to the linking of psychology and evolution. It's an, a, very, a very important uh, aspect of uh, psychology is how psychology, uh, you know, how we learn about behavioral mental processes, how behavioral mental processes are adapted, how they help us survive. So an important concept that comes from Darwin is the concept of natural selection, how, how we evolve. And it basically has to do with when there is a competition for resources among uh, you know, species or groups of species. Basically, some people are going to be able to get the resources and some people are not. The organisms that are able to successfully get the resources that they need to survive are going to be able to survive and they're going to be able to reproduce. The ones that fail in that competition are going to die off. They're not going to be able to reproduce. And this is how uh, this needs to change over time. And there are certain kinds of characteristics that a person might, uh, that, a, that an organism might be born with that might uh, promote reproduction and survival that may help them, give them an advantage. Uh, you know, we could talk about, uh, John was talking about like a genetic mutation that might uh, occur. And this genetic mutation might need one organism to be more successful in being able to uh, get the resources that he or she needs. So that is an important concept here. And then, and those, and then once those mutations essentially get carried over to the next generation because they've been conducive to survival. The mutations that are not conducive to survival are the ones that would die off. But then, of course, 
uh, it doesn't just end there. You have environmental factors that come into play. Some certain kinds of environmental changes would then lead some in organisms to become uh, more successful than others to become less successful. So maybe a characteristic that was helpful in the past is not so helpful when the environment changes. And as a result, uh, the generations continue on and on uh, based on those new genetic mutations that are more adapted to the current environment and versus uh, the previous environment. So this is how we evolve. This is how species change. And this isn't just happening in humans. It's happening in bacteria. It's happening in all kinds of organisms. There's not plenty of evidence to show how uh, this occurs, how this is evolved, how the environmental changes can alter the course of the species as evolution process.